So we know that um, identifying any coagulation or bleeding disorders in a timely fashion can be critical in a lot of scenarios, in uh, severely injured or critically ill patients, or when patients present with bleeding that are taking anticoagulant therapies. And the currently available tests are um, time consuming. They require a central lab and they require special processing of blood. There are some handheld devices that can run these tests in a more um, time-restricted manner, but we also know that they don't provide a comprehensive assessment uh, of the coagulation process, they don't provide any information on platelet function, and they're also not very sensitive because of the reagents their devices use. So we set out to find and develop a device that can add to the information we uh, obtain uh, in a portable fashion that doesn't require any processing of blood and um, can be portable and handheld. So this device is fully electrical and it employs um, the dielectric spectroscopy technique. And what essentially happens is that dielectric spectroscopy enables the measurement of the permittivity of blood as it coagulates. So at specific frequencies, it, uh, the dielectric permittivity changes um, because of the deformation of blood as it coagulates. So it take into, takes into consideration the cellular components, the red blood cell deformation, the platelet aggregation, as well as the coagulation process driven by the protein factors in the blood. So it's fully uh, comprehensive, fully electrical, and results can be um, available within a few minutes. So we first conducted uh, measurements with uh, samples from uh, healthy volunteers and we first optimized our um, device to, from a first generation to a second generation device that consists of biocompatible chemical inert materials. And we um, established um, the characteristic curve and uh, certain parameters that we found correlated best with the time it takes to coagulate. And then we ran samples in patients that have a, an array of uh, coagulation defects, hemophilia A, hemophilia B, von Willebrand disease, but also distant coagulopathies, hypodysfibrinogenemic samples. And what we found was that there was a very significant prolongation in the time to peak permittivity in the clotch readout. And when we compared um, the sensitivity and the specificity of our device, to the PTT and PTT assays, uh, we found that it actually had the superior sensitivity and specificity. And finally, we have run uh, platelet um, uh, studies, platelet inhibition studies, where we actually inhibit platelet function and we see that the clot chip readout is um, a statistically significant reduction in a different parameter of our measurement, so the clot chip can discriminate between coagulation and platelet defects. And we are also presenting data that it can do uh, that in uh, samples of patients that take target specific oral anticoagulant agents, which I think is very exciting to uh, be able to capture the effect of these uh, medications in uh, a rapid fashion. Um, we are starting a pilot clinical study that will open very soon at the Louis Stokes Cleveland VA Medical Center. We're very interested in determining whether the clot chip can, um, in a sensitive fashion, measure the anticoagulant effect of these target-specific oral anticoagulants. We have access to a very large uh, patient population on these agents. So um, that's the first application that we're very interested in pursuing. And number two is patients that um, are placed on antiplatelet therapy, mostly for cardiac indications. We know that they have a variable metabolism and response uh, of their platelets to the antiplatelet therapy. We want to see if we can actually yeah, in a um, rapid way, 
uh, determine whether platelet responsiveness is uh, desired levels in patients with uh, taking antiplatelet agents. So that would be another indication we want to pursue.